Okay, so here we're going to look at the match EQ. If you've got two conflicting bits of audio, you can learn the profile of one to adjust the other or to adjust that. Equally, you can use it to reference larger piece of audio, so a whole mix and better understand the overall scope of what's going on with that track. And you could even apply that profile to your own music. So in a mix where you've got vocals and brass, they're quite often a conflict. They uh, tend to hold around the same area, sort of that 500 through to like 6K region tends to be their most prominent area and they'll conflict a bit. So I've just grabbed two samples that kind of do that and I'm just gonna show you how the match EQ can work for you. So across the bottom, you've got current reference and EQ curve and you've got learn on current and you've got learn on reference. So what you're gonna do is learn the profiles of the sound. So if I click learn on current and we've got this assigned to the brass sound here. You can see now it's captured the frequencies that occurred during that brass section. If I now click reference, I can do learn and do the same thing with the vocal because I have that coming in via the side chain up here. And as you can see, they really do occupy the same area, which is why if you've got, say, a brass ensemble, it can be quite difficult to mix the two. And that this is a technique just so you can really blend them in those difficult situations. So now we've got a reference and we've got our current and we know which applies to which. We can now go to the EQ curve and if we click match, it's gonna give us this uh, very unusual looking EQ curve. Now we are free to adjust it like we would any other curve. Each time we click on a point, we create a new area and we can adjust that as we need. But what's important to note is this is a reflection of the current and the reference. Now if we boost it one way, it's going to apply a boost and cut to one area of the sound, allowing the other to come through and while still accentuating other areas of the other sound. Because if we were to drag the slider the opposite way, we apply the opposite effect. So you hear that's now over enforcing the brass. So if we do this, it's helping us dip in the key conflict areas of where the vocal comes in. Now generally what I would do if I've had to do this sort of processing and apply it afterwards, I would introduce a channel EQ and I would generally just adjust anything else that needed doing. For example, I would take this low end boost out. Um, it can be done on the EQ itself here. It's just not the most practical uh, way of operating. So that is an introduction to match EQ. Now you can do exactly the same technique here and apply it to your own mix. What I would suggest doing is reference a song that you really, really like and enjoy. Capture that as your reference and apply it to your mix. And it should give you an idea of the balance difference. Just please note, um, you will see things like this 200 hertz spike here. If your tracks are in different keys, it will be picking up fundamentals in the music and it will boost them in irrelevant places to your mix. So make sure you can get two tracks that are in the same sort of key and ideally the same sort of genre, and this should help you just apply a little bit of a profile to them and maybe getting them sound a little bit better. It's also good to adjust it in very small increments when doing that, so just a, a few percent here. And it can also help quite a bit to use the smoothing slider here and just ease it off a bit like that. And it should just help you boost and cut in some real key areas.